It is time for my yearly grooming of my Talansias, and I had a request about my Talansia care. So first of all, my apologies to the original viewer that requested this video. I did not capture your request straight away and completely forgot who you are so that I could mention you and thank you for asking. However, Insu Orchids and ADD did mention that he would also like a video, so shout out to Insu Orchids and ADD. Let me give you my tips on Talansia care as I groom them, and yes, you heard correctly, I only do this once a year. This does not equate to me not giving two hoots about them. As a matter of fact, they have really grown on me. Unintended. <laughs> but I only have these Talansias because I was desperate to have a piece of cork to mount my dendrobium aphyllum on. And while the aphyllum looked ridiculously small back in the day on a huge mount, now the mount looks ridiculously small compared to the orchid. Anyway, that was five years ago. So what you see here with my Talansias is five years of growth minus the old mother plants that I popped off as and when necessary, but we will get to that. As I mentioned, they were mounted on a piece of cord. That is one way to grow them. Another way is what I have done here. I took the same PVC coated wire that I used for my orchid supports and formed a little spring-like structure at the end, leaving a long stake for staking the structures into the pot of just gravel. This way, on most occasions, I can twist off the different talansias and after grooming them, twist them back on, using the leaves as guides to keep them in place. Sometimes it works, and in some cases you can see that the pups are growing between my spiral and, well, those I cannot twist off anymore, but it still makes for a nice presentation. You don't have to do anything. You can just have them lying on a shelf <laughs> and be done with it. No pot, no media, no mount, nothing. <laughs> so there's that option as well. I like my presentation because it also ensures airflow, which is what they need or else they will rot. Now, how I water them is by misting, and the water I use is reverse osmosis water because out in nature they would only get rainwater if and when it rains where they are, or they draw moisture from the air in high humidity climates. High humidity is how they are very capable of surviving without any additional water if the humidity stays higher than 60% consistently, preferably even higher than that. So you can see that if given a lot of airflow to dry out after misting, then high humidity would require a little less airflow or they would dry out even faster and possibly too fast. So there's a little bit of a balance based on how high your humidity is compared to how strong your airflow should be so that they don't frazzle out too soon if you're going to rely on humidity only as their access to moisture. Now what you can also do is take them and soak them upside down in a tub of pure water for about 10 minutes and then let them dry out completely before positioning them upright again. Yes, it's best to let them dry upside down so no water remains in the crown for too long. Now, I do not do that because you can see how I have different types where soaking upside down just isn't practical. But while they are small and don't have multiple pups, that is a way to water them indoors because misting indoors can be a bit cumbersome as well, while soaking is less messy if you do grow yours indoors. A soak will sustain them for well over two weeks, again, depending on your humidity levels and airflow. You may need to soak them two times a month or once a month if your humidity is steady over 60%. Now, in my situation, if it were to rain during the winter months, then I move them to a different shelf away from the rain because cold temperatures, high humidity, and even with a lot of airflow, which is also cold, Old, they won't dry out fast enough, so I hardly miss them during the months of December through March. But daily mistings are a must during the months of June through September because during those months my humidity can be as low as 10% with hot winds that really exacerbate the dry conditions. As we mentioned that Talansias really draw most of their moisture from the air, you can imagine that would result in next to no fertilizer requirements for them. But I do provide them with 50 parts per million of the same fertilizer that I use for my organic kids. I don't mix up anything specific for them. No Talansia special fertilizer product, if something like that even exists. The fact that they are getting something more than what they would get out in nature, that would equate to me already going the extra mile. And being such slow growers, they really don't need much. You also don't want to give them a lot of fertilizer because you could also burn all the fuzzy structures they have, which is their way of drawing moisture from the air. And salts can build up on those, which render them useless. And I do 
not supplement with anything. They definitely do not get seaweed extract because I don't want to discolor their silver appearance with the seaweed extract. And guess what? If you do not fertilize your Talensias at all, uh, that is absolutely fine. They won't suffer. They won't struggle. Anyway, I mentioned pups before we got into the watering and fertilizing. And well, those are baby plants that the mother plant normally starts to develop after she has finished blooming. I say normally because the one identified Talansia that I have, my Tectorum snow, has a pup growing but has never bloomed for me. Still, if you see the mother plant bloom, expect pups to form. Allow the mother plant to completely die back. That is normal before cutting it off. The pup depends on the energy provided by the mother plant to grow into a blooming sized Talansia. It can take months and even years for a mother plant to die back before she's completely depleted, making a Talansia already look like a specimen even without it actually being one. It also takes years for the store-bought Talansias to bloom because what you are buying are usually the pups that have been removed for propagation purposes and they are too young to bloom. My smallest Talansia took two years before it bloomed and I have since popped off two depleted mother plants as it is a faster growing Talansia compared to the rest. Speaking of blooms, it is advisable to not have any water get on the blooms, be it from misting and even worse if they get soaked while in bloom. The blooms do not take kindly to water and will fade quickly as well as affect any other blooms that are waiting within the spike to bloom out. As such, the blooms are not that long lived even if the utmost care is taken when watering Talansias in bloom, but the whole spike will crash if it is in bloom and gets water on it. Now, I do not do anything different with my watering even if my Talansias are in bloom. It is too much of a hassle for me, but in case you have yours in bloom or see a spike, then I want to let you know that water should not get anywhere near to the blooms or the spike. Throughout this video so far, you have seen how I go about grooming my Talansias, and if you don't mind, to give this video a thumbs up that would be amazing thank you but the ones that I cannot twist off their support I just clip the old leaves off just to make them look more presentable but ideally you want to be able to get at the base of them to remove any dead or almost dead leaves so that good airflow is provided in those areas because of how they use their leaves to grab hold of moisture particles they are like little sponges and a healthy leaf can deal with the moisture it can absorb it and the leaf dries out quickly a dead leaf will just just behave like a sponge and do nothing of the sorts. It will stay wet and wet and wet. So if you have a cluster of dead leaves at the base, you pretty much have a nice sponge down there which can invite rot. I take off all the dead leaves at the base, go all the way to see green healthy leaves and the stem structure and take off even a little bit more than necessary, seeing as I only do this once a year. <laughs> if you handle your Talansias on a regular basis, you can check the underside of the plant and remove dead leaves as they come without going as far as I go. I also try to cut off any old remaining spike from the mother plant that is still viable just to give the cluster a tidier look. It is not necessary but it makes the whole thing more presentable especially as it does take so long for a mother plant to die back. You can see that some of my pots have an empty support in them and that is because Talansias in my climate are susceptible to scale. Getting rid of the scale on these plants is a nightmare and near to impossible because of the hairy texture around most of their leaves. I have another one that is segregated away from the rest of them because I saw it was showing signs of a scale infestation. Luckily this one does not have the pronounced hairy texture on its leaves. I may stand a chance to be able to get rid of the scale by using my garlic infused alcohol and check to see if the bodies can be removed. So there it is on the east side cable. Uh, I expect it on the daily just to make sure that no new scale have appeared. These kinds of Talansias are the slowest growing for me and while I have two, I would prefer not to lose this one. So while it is segregated, it is in full winter sun because the sun isn't that strong and the air isn't that warm yet. But when it comes to the light they get, normally they are in bright shade. For the time being, they're scattered all around the blooming alley based on where they fit but usually they are on the shelf in the cul-de-sac protected by a curtain from the strong summer sun. And that is where they live all year round. I do not bring them inside. They have to tolerate anything the weather throws at them temperature wise. And if it were to rain during the winter, I move them to different shelves so that they don't get wet, soaking wet for that matter. They just don't dry out fast enough during the winters. But 
Here in southern Spain, they are exposed to temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius all the way up to 30 degrees Celsius and higher should we ever get such high temperatures. So I hope you enjoyed me watching Deal With My Talansias while I talked you through what I do with mine. I think they're doing super well and I'm glad that they have grown so well in the past years. It was a needs must purchase back then. I would not have Talansias if I did not need that piece of cork, but here we are. And they're not something that complicates my life in any way, shape or form. Inse, I hope you're well equipped now to take care of your Talansias. And if your name is not Inse, then I hope that this video was helpful as well and gave you some pointers with regards to Talansias, whether you have them or maybe this video has inspired you to get some. Once again, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up for me and subscribe to the channel. That added support means a lot and goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you also so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.